I'm going to zoom out a little bit and talk about design in the bigger picture. Right now, 90% of the designers in the world work only for the richest 10% of the world's customers. <laughs> a revolution in design is needed to reverse this silly ratio. And here's the first principle presented by Vince Lombardi Polak. Uh, I think this is a joke that only the older people know. Uh, or do, uh, how many people have never heard of Vince Lombardi? Okay. Vince Lombardi was a famous football coach uh, who, when asked how he treated blacks, uh, one of the black players on the team said, Oh, he treats us all the same, like dogs. <laughs> but his famous saying was, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. In designing tools and services for poor people, affordability isn't everything, it's the only thing. And you can't design tools and services from the Cooper Hewitt Museum, or if you're in the academic setting at Stanford, you have to go to where the problem is, talk to the people who have the problem, listen to what they have to say, have to say and understand fully the context that they operate in. Here is David Klaus, who is a graduate student at Stanford. He's part of the course called Design for Extreme Affordability, and here he is in Myanmar, formerly Burma, learning about the life. Uh, this is a, an irrigation, the most popular irrigation system in Myanmar. Uh, people carry uh, water in watering cans and apply it to plants. Uh, he, he ended up designing uh, a remarkable new piece of, of uh, water transporting technology. He and a multidisciplinary team at Stanford, and he represents a whole army of young people that are interested in making a difference. And I want to make it clear that this isn't all serious and grim. These people have a hell of a lot of fun, just as I have over the last 25 years. Here are some of the things that, and there are hundreds of these things that people in the world are waiting for. A hundred dollar house, there are a billion people who need eyeglasses and don't have them. $2 eyeglasses are totally feasible. But the design problem is not designing the glasses, it's designing a global private sector distribution system. A $10 solar lantern is already here. We formed a company to make it available. These are the kinds of people that use these affordable pieces of equipment. Here is a drip irrigation equip, uh, system used in Africa and it costs one-fifth of the standard drip irrigation system. There are several hundred thousand of these already purchased by people who are in less than a dollar a day, the kind of people Martin has talked about. And here I'll throw in what I call the Don't Bother Trilogy of Design for the other 90%. <laughs> if you haven't had conversations with at least 25 poor people before you start, If it won't pay for itself in the first year, and if you can't sell at least a million of them, don't bother. Now that may seem a little strange to you, but it takes a lot of work to design a really effective tool. You have to uh, let poor people try it out, tell you what's wrong with it, fix it, do it again. And there are so many vitally needed tools that if you're gonna go through all that design process, you might as well do it in an area where it can make a huge impact. So I'm going to close with a, really the, the question somebody asked Willie Sutton, the famous bank robber. They asked him, why do, you, why do you rob banks? 
And he said, because that's where the money is. <laughs> and that really is the essential question. Why do today most of the people who design things work only on solving the problems <coughs> of the richest 10% of the world's customers? I think the answer is because they think that's where the money is. But if you look at the history of design, its breakthroughs in affordability, making things cheaper and making things smaller that have had a profound impact. Before Henry Ford came along, if you asked the 100 or so car manufacturers why they were making only cars for rich playboys that cost $2,200, they would say, because that's where the money is. But that's not where the money is now, or it was when Henry Ford was done with his $500 motor car. The market was with the working man. Same with computers. There are huge markets waiting to be tapped for uh, solving the problems of the, of the nine, other 90% of the world's customers. And in the future, People will not be designing the things as students are now because they want to make a difference. They will be designing things for the other 90% for the same reason Willie Sutton gave, because that's where the money is. Thank you very much. <laughs>